Okay. Now today we're going to be going over two word sheets. Um, these are kind of the easy ones to do, basic stall and yard stuff for you to be successful. I do want to remind you, you need to be quiet while we're going over this. And when you go and work on these and you have questions, you're certainly welcome to answer or ask them today. I told you about the question card. That did not include detective training school. Okay, you can ask as many questions as you want this entire week because we want to make sure everybody gets it down so you all pass the test on Thursday. Okay, so don't, don't hold back on questions this week while we're going through these things. And then the following week, once we're labs only, then we'll break out the question cards so you got your limited number of questions. Okay, uh, we're going to be using two things with the worksheets. The first is this. This is the Scotland Yard flow chart. So when you hear me mention the flow chart, <coughs> That's this. It's kind of like the road map for Scotland Yard. It shows you what to do and where to go next. Okay, we'll be using that extensively this week. The other thing are, is the procedures. This is the list of lab steps. Okay, and what you do in each step, like how many drops of this add, when do you centrifuge, when do you heat, when do you burn something, etc. Okay, so those are the two things we'll be mentioning quite a bit today. Okay, so our first worksheet is how to use the flowchart. Let me explain what the flowchart is before we even start reading that and give you an idea of how it works. When you first look at this flowchart, it looks very complicated. Uh, lots of chemical formulas, lots of chemical symbols, and boxes and lines all over the place, so it makes it look fairly difficult. It's really not that hard. I want you to think of it this way. The boxes represent your test tube and what could be in it. Now notice how I said that. I said it that way for a reason. It re represents your test tube and what could be in it. You always start your cases right at the top. And so therefore there are 16 unknowns written in there because it could be any of them when I first hand you your case. And it could be multiples of any of them, like two, three, or four of them. And I'll usually tell you this is a one criminal case. Today we're going to be pretty specific about if you had one criminal with a lot of stuff we're talking about. Okay? As you go from the starting point, you get to these little numbers. Okay? So think of these lines kind of like roads, and this is your road signs here. Every one of these numbers represents a chemical step. You're adding something, you're doing something, you're changing pH, you're evaporating, you're centrifuging something. Okay? Every number on there represents something you have to do. After that, you'll notice that it usually has lines going in multiple directions. Sometimes it's real simple, like this one that has two directions. Sometimes complicated, like the one down here that breaks into four parts. And then, of course, there's ones that just go one place. Those are where we find things you're guilty. And what I mean by that is, if you get to that step and it works like it's supposed to, you know who your unknown is says lead foot guilty, that means lead foot is your unknown, or whoever it might be, okay? So the lines are like paths that we follow. The numbers and what happens in those steps is going to tell us where to go next, okay? So in step one, what happens in my test tube could cause me to go to the left, and now I've narrowed it to only two choices, which would be great, because now you went from 16 possible to two, or you can tell me to go straight down where there's 14 still remaining. And you'll notice the further you get down the line on these boxes, the less there are from 14 to 9 to 7 to just 3, etc. And we'll talk about how you get there from one place to another as we go. Okay, so boxes represent your test tube. Lines are like a path that go from one step to another. And the numbers are directions that tell us which way we're going. Okay, so that's the general idea of what the flow chart is. Okay, so how to read a flowchart. Uh, in reading flowcharts, there are a few basic ideas that will help you understand how to follow them. First of all, take a copy of the flowchart for the Scotland Yard Project. Make sure everybody in your group can see it while we're going through this, please. One, boxes are placed before and after a step in the lab and usually represent a new chemical product or chemical change. Very important. If the box is shaded, the product is a solid. If the box is clear, the product is a liquid. Example, the box below step number four is shaded. Therefore, a solid was produced by step number four. And what they mean by that is, when I look on the flow chart, 
if this represents what my test tube has in it, and I do step number four, which is adding drops of potassium iodide, PI, then this is what my product could be, PBI2. Because that box is shaded, that means a solid formed in that step, or at least could form in that step, if that was our unknown. And that's the trick of it. We're not sure it's going to work until we get to that very last step, and it says, if you get a yellow solid, lead foot is guilty, and then you know you're finished. Okay? So shaded means solid, clear means liquid. And that's part of, and the majority part of, how you know which way you're going. When solids form, you go one way. When liquids form, you usually go another. And that's a big part of how we get around in Scotland Yard. Two, when a number symbol and number are listed, they represent a procedure that's listed in the Scotland Yard investigating procedures. That's your directions for what to get, do. So like that step number three, or excuse me, step number four I was just talking about. That matches up with this particular step on the second page of the, page of the procedures. Step number four, final test for lead foot. To the liquid label step four, add three drops of KI if the yellow solid forms and lead foot is your criminal. Steps, these numbers will match to all the numbers you see on your flow chart. So wherever you see a number is number symbol, you're going somewhere in here to know what to do. Three, and this is um, one of the harder parts, but it's also one of the things that's, uh, well, if you can do it right, you'll probably do pretty well in the Scotland Yard test. The box above a procedure number represents the reactance of that procedure. The box below a procedure represents the products of that step. Okay, now what I mean by that, last week, or last two weeks, we worked with chemical reactions. We had reactants on the left, equal products on the right. I would add something together to make something new, kind of like a math procedure. Like if I added uh, lead plus potassium iodide, it makes lead iodide to make something new. Well, that's what we worked on the last couple weeks. The difference with a flow chart is instead of going left to right with equations, we go top to bottom. Okay, for example, back to my step number four I was mentioning earlier. If I want to identify the reactants and products of that step, I'm going to look at it this way. I find the step number, number four. The reactants are what went into there. So in our case, it would be the box above. That's what was in our test tube before. Because it was in our test tube, we added something in step four and made something new. So we had lead, we added KI to it and made something new. Reactants, what we added, and products. Reactants and products. Okay? Now, in this step, it's fairly obvious what the reactants and products are. Box above, box below. What I started with, what I ended with. Some of our more complicated boxes will have multiple things written in them, and you have to know what you're looking for. For example, this one right here. I have four possible reactants, four possible products. So in questions involving step number 19, I'll be specific like, uh, what are the reactants and products for magnesium in step 19? Well, that's one of the reasons you had to memorize that periodic table, because you've got to know what magnesium is. So I find Mg, which is magnesium. So I want to know the reactants and products for that step. I say MgOH2 is above 19, so it's a, pro a reactant. Mg is below step 19, so it's the product. Okay, above and below for magnesium. And I can do the same for cobalt, copper, and nickel as well. Above and below. <laughs> Oftentimes, there'll be multiple places you have to look. Like if I did step 15 and I wanted to find the reactants and products for zinc, it could be in this box or this box, and I have to find the symbol, of course, above and below. So the above is still Zn plus 2, but below I've got to look. Is it over here? No. Is it over here? Yes. Zn plus 2 again. So, the reactant was Zn plus 2, and the product was Zn plus 2. What, what does that mean to you if the reactant and the product are the same? What do you think happened? If it's still the same formula, then nothing happened. Okay? If it's still zinc plus 2, nothing happened. So whatever I did in that step, nothing happened. Okay? All right, so boxes above and below, reactants, products. Okay, and I let myself into number four here. If a reactant and product for a certain step remain the same, then no reaction occurred for that step. 
Uh, example, look at step divide for the cobalt ion, the reactor is CO plus 2, and the product is CO plus 2. So there was no change for the cobalt ion during that procedure. And we can look this up. You'll see a lot of questions like this on the test and worksheets. Did something react in a certain step? For example, let's say I look at step number 12 down here in the bottom left. Everybody find step number 12 right there. And I want to know, did chromium, which is CR, for those of you who don't know your table very well, did chromium react during step 12? Look on your flow chart and see, does it change its formula? No, it doesn't. CRO4 minus 2, CRO4 minus 2. Because they're the same, whatever I added in that step, nothing happened. And about literally 50% of the scholarly art steps you do, nothing happens. Okay, it doesn't look any different than it did before. Whatever chemical, are you talking about the next one? Whatever chemical I added in 14 had barium in it. That's how I added it in there. Barium chloride. Matter of fact, it's BACL2. Okay, then our last step, and this is uh, our roadmap portion of this. Remember the easiest way to think about flow chart is like a map. The lines on the map lead to your destination like a road would. Certain things occur that tell you where to go next. A lot of our steps is going to have, a lot of our questions is going to ask you to trace steps. Trace steps for somebody's guilt. Okay, for example, if I was going to trace the steps for lead foot guilty, Here's how we do it. I chose an easy one for myself here. We start at the top every time. And what I'm going to do is think of it like a road that I had to follow over here to get to lead foot guilty. And every time I ran across the number, it was a step I had to do. So to make lead foot guilty, I had to do one, two, and four. And because I did one, two, and four, then I know lead foot's guilty. Okay? Now if I had to do the same for, uh, let's see. Calcium. See if you can find the steps to get to calcium guilty. And you don't have to write them down or say them out loud. Just see if you can trace your way down. We'll see how you do. From the top, what numbers would I have to do to get here? So kind of think about it out in your head, and I'll tell you what we would have done. Okay, so it would go one, five. 15, 16, 17. I'd have to do five steps to get that criminal. You just follow it's, the lines down. You just follow the lines down. It's not even hard. Nobody said scholarly yard was hard. I, I've said that many times. Scholarly yard is not difficult. Sometimes, I mean, look at this. If we do lead foot, three steps. Lead foot is a 10 minute criminal. If you get lead foot, you're done in 10 minutes. You got 40 points. But at the same time, what if you end up with way down here, if you end up with magnesium? Down here, number 24, I guess, oh, we can say Ben Call for 23. You got a lot of tracing when you get your way there. Okay? So some criminals take a lot longer than others. And that We try to make it equitable as possible. Okay. B, oh, go ahead. That's because they are solids. Whenever we see oh. <laughs> shaded, that means solid. Okay. One other thing you'll be doing quite often, I want you to think of this as a case. Some of the questions on the test are going to ask you, who is guilty if the following was true? And then it'll give you a scenario like, okay, you do this step and you get this, you do this step and you get this, and we're going to do that real quick. I want you to tell me who's guilty as we go through this and what steps we are doing next. Okay, for example, if I did step one, everybody find step one in the up, or upper left? If I did step one and we got a liquid afterwards, what step would I do next? Five. five. Does everybody know why five is the answer to that question? It's not <laughs> because it's not, it's clear. And I said it, nothing happened. Okay? So we do step five, same thing. We get no solid. Where do I go next? Fifteen. Fifteen, over here, clear box. If I got a solid, I would have gone down to six. But I didn't get a solid, so I went over to fifteen. Okay? I do step 15, same thing, nothing happens. Where do I go next? 18. 18, so I'm over here on the right, 18. Now I do another step, nothing happens again. Where am I? 25. 25, and I do step 26 and I get a red flame. 
What's lithium is my guilty party. Liffy Borden is my guilty party. Okay? So that's exactly how Scotland Yard works. You do steps, either a solid forms or it doesn't, and it tells you where to go. And the more steps you do, the less choices you have until you finally narrow it down to who it is. That's as tough as Scotland Yard is. Okay? It is not difficult. That's why I told you everybody can do it. Okay, so that is worksheet number one.